Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Designer Studio episode. I have Andrea joining me, you know him as Josta11, and we're taking a look at his collection for Barbarossa Bricks. So we got another variety video for you here. Where would you like to start? Let's start from the tanks. All so right. the world famous Panzer IV and Panzer II. Mm -hmm. So well, I designed this from scratch, Panzer II. Panzer let's, start, let's start from these ones. So yeah, okay. we have Minifigs and Lando is going to talk about it. We have all the standard features that the Panzer II had. This is the F model, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it was introduced for Barbarossa, some light adjustments to the armament and the, the sloping of the turret. It's, it has everything you, you want in, in a small tank like this. Mm -hmm. you, you, can, you have engine hatch, to commander's hatch, turret rotates, antenna, all the small details like tools and uh, exhaust pipe. Yeah, and yeah, it rolls very well. Yeah. We have some sweet printing on the wheels right here. So let's some nice detailing. And I think we can fit as well a minifig inside. Oh, really? With this small yes, tank, that's we super do, impressive. We do have some actual details yeah. inside. So we have um, the wheel and the transmission in here, yes. So some d more detailing than the previous ones that Brickmania has released. Mm -hmm. So we, this can actually fit to a crew of two. And it's yeah. still built like a tank. I mean, you did oh, not yeah, start yeah. both of these models. Absolutely, no structural yeah. integrity problems. That, that's whatsoever. one of my. It's brick mania toys. So we need to bring the people things that are started, and you can play with in any way. So Absolutely. They need to look good in a in a display case, but the, you can also be able to give it to your kids and play with them, and mm -hmm. not have to rebuild them from scratch every time. And this the, the uh, this is the Panzer IV mm -hmm. House F1. Uh, this is kind of uh, um, an homage to my first kit. My first kit was a Panzer, D, Panzer IV Aus D, mm -hmm. made by Dan. So what I wanted to do was to bring that model to another level. Yeah, so okay. I took his model and started brainstorming on it. What can I do to bring it to the next level? So I added detailing, I added the shape. I've added, of course, all the differences between, between the F1 and the D model. So this is kind of my... Thank you, note to Dan for bringing me to Brickmania. Oh, so that's very cool. Let's start from the bottom up. I love that play function. If you guys oh can yeah. see that there, he's controlling that from the from yeah. The this rear. is that's really cool. Sweet. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I want to do full interior, but Dan's original model was too cramped inside because it's very sturdy. It's right, it's very sturdy build. So, uh, what can I do to bring it to next level? Let's add a power function mm -hmm. right here. I rotate 360. I've added the slopes to the front and the turret. I've added some details on the side. I rebuilt the back in order to have a um, historically accurate hatch for the engine that's detailed. Oh, very and cool. And then we have antenna, of course, it goes up, some storage on the side, and the cherry on the pile, as we say in Italy, <laughs> is <laughs> detailed interior, ammunition store, uh, transmission engine, and the crew compartment. So that's got to be a fun portion of the build when you're actually exactly. bringing it up too. The, yeah. the, that's what brings you to, to the tank. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are building a full tank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's very uh, a thing that I really wanted to incorporate in this tank. So yeah, rolls or no? I was going to say if we hold yeah, the thing. If you hold the thing, it rolls very well, like Dan's original model. And this is the Panzer for F1 for Barbarossa bricks. Yeah. Very cool. And then we have my first ever mock. <laughs> <laughs> it started as a really mediocre build and then it ended up like this. With, I mean, the printing on this is pretty incredible. Ne next level. Yeah, I agree. Next level, all the rivets, the Italian loved rivet in their tank. This is amazing. So we have as well hatches in the back, mm -hmm. some storage. Interesting to see too with these two next to each other. Oh you're yeah. working with even less space in this to try this to get is those details. This, by Italian standards, would have been a medium tank. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. The the medium tank the Italian had is pretty much the same size. Mm -hmm. So th this is, this gives you perspective on what we actually were capable yes. of during World War II. This is the only tank Italian tank that fought during uh, Barbarossa. Mm -hmm. Uh, during the fighting in Russia. It, it, it arrived later during the operation in winter of 42, but it took part of the fighting in Russia. It wasn't very effective, it was supporting infantry mostly. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so turret fits 
uh, a guy inside here, and then as well we have some details interior, inside. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this is my my first ever mock that ended up becoming a Brick Mania kit. So I'm I really I really love this one. Yeah, I bet that's Small a really little cool tank progression. And we have also a pizza tile. <laughs> <laughs> this was. Is that close enough? This was uh, yeah, tip it up a, little bit. a request of mine to add that that song something more to this one because yeah. I really love this one. So well, that's good yeah. to know that it was a request of yours, and we just didn't be like, well, if the Italians make an Italian <laughs> tank, we better throw a pizza in there. Yeah, <laughs> so that's a cool detail. Yeah, have. that's awesome. So let's go over to the planes. Yes. What we have here. So we have FW Fock Wolf One Eight Nine. Nicknamed the Hoo Hoo, Hoo, -hoo mm -hmm. that in German means owl, eagle, right? eagle owl. Eagle owl, eagle right. owl yeah. So this was the best reconnaissance as aircraft the Germans had. It was only used on the Eastern Front, mm -hmm. and it saw several type of views during the war as the war progressed. So it started as a reconnaissance plane. Mm -hmm. It was nicknamed the Rama. I'm sorry for my our Russian friends if the pronunciation is not correct, <laughs> but Rama means frame because uh -huh. it right. kind of look, look, kind of looks like a well, frame. Well, so and I gotta yeah. say for the model itself too, you can tell that those you know there's a lot of weight built into those wings, and then you don't have much structural support if you're going to keep the the proportions yeah. accurate to it. But this is a really sturdy model, right? Exactly. That is a really impressive yeah. that you're able to put that together the way you did. Yeah. Uh, wings tilt up. Tilt yeah, up that's a bit. really cool. Yeah. I managed, I'm really happy about this one. I really managed to incorporate all the features that I wanted. So li just a little bit of history. It was nicknamed the Rama, the, the frame by the Russian. They were very afraid of this one because when it was in the sky, everything was okay. But when it wasn't, that meant either bombers or artillery Something barrage were way. coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. So later in the war, um, when our superiority of the Germans was lacking, this became a night fighter. Okay. Because they implanted a radar on it and it became a night fighter mm -hmm. because it, it was becoming dangerous to fly these ones uh, during the day. Yeah, so this is it. We have printing on the sides as well as bark and crites, sweet pilots and all the features you want. Spinning propeller fits. If you want to fit all the three guys inside, you actually can. But really? this one comes with only two. The two visible, yes. Yeah. You need to push the pilot a little bit further. You can have one guy manning the machine gun here, and then you can actually fit a third guy in here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually what they were doing. They were laying down, belly, belly down, and then shooting with the machine gun here mm -hmm. that could rotate and shoot up and down. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, landing gear falls up, and yeah, rudder and stabilizer fully functioning. I still, just the structural integrity of such a skinny little kit just will continue yeah. to impress me. Uh, very, very well done. Yeah. The, um, the trick is using uh, plate to, and plates are really sturdy if, uh, if you put them in the right, in the right position. Right. So that's, if you have a frame of plates, everything goes together very well. Cool. Yeah. And the third one. Is so w there was some jokes around the office for this one about being <laughs> the uh, the aircraft that when you're first starting like an air combat simulator video game and you're oh, yeah. on level one, <laughs> this is your starter aircraft. This is the first plane you get, <laughs> which we thought was awesome. But it is a cute little yes, aircraft. Yes, it, it's very cute. It was actually maybe the most effective plane the Russians had when the war broke out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the, um, the process behind this was, once again, I printed blueprints. I start laying pieces that this is not correct. It, it can be so chunky, <laughs> but it actually is. Mm -hmm. It's very, very chunky, big engine. It was in real life, it was very maneuverable because it's very short. Mm -hmm. It started its career during the Spanish, Spanish civil war. Civil war, yeah, sure. Yeah. And yeah, during Barbarossa, it's w it was the only, ga the only plane that could actually put up a fight against the message meet. Interesting. Because it doesn't look like it necessarily yeah, it would be toe-to-toe. -to -toe it doesn't. <laughs> Open top, uh, it, it's a cabriolet, mm -hmm. <laughs> cabriolet plane. It had machine guns and later it, it even had cannons. And yeah, so it, it was a tough one to, to deal with. But again, they were really struggling with, um, with their pilots. They were not very well trained. Mm -hmm. so. A bunch of them got shot down, but they put up a fight, yeah, yeah. for sure. Some cross-element printing on oh the wings yeah. there we that looks nice. These are actually stickers, because mm -hmm. you have several writings that you can, you can choose from, yeah. 
folding landing gear and then cross element stickers on the wings, on the tail and several numbers you can choose from for the back and also an awesome Russian pilot that Lando is going to talk about. A little early in war action there, yeah. Oh yeah, Le very little gear they had, mm -hmm. not even a parachute on this guy. Historically accurate minimization. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Well, this is a heck of a rundown for Barbarossa Bricks. Um, oh, yeah. Before we bring in Landon, anything else you want to touch on? No, that's it. Most Sweet. of those are still in stock, so grab them while you can. Awesome. Well, obviously, there's some cool minifigures integrated in these kits as well, so let's bring in Landon, take a little closer look at the minifigures included in this lineup. Hey, all right, jumping right into the minifigures, let's start with the German tankers. Um, so, obviously, right at the top, we have these awesome in house designed. 3D printed um, crusher caps here with those, those headphones. I think that's a really cool detail. Um, and that's looking really great in this uh, black resin uh, 3D printing. Um, I think it's just a good example of uh, just the evolution of our uh, 3D printed artwork. They look excellent, especially with that extra UV printing on the front there. Um, these uniforms, the, it's the Panzer wrap from uh, uh, World War II, obviously, and we have the nice um, different little details. You get the, um, I think that's the Iron Cross little uh, award there, and just different insignia throughout the whole thing. You got the Luger pistol case, and you have the microphone cords coming down. Um, some dust on those boots. Yeah, kind of a, a menacing look there. And then, so you have the young guy over here, and you have the, the more grizzled, experienced commander over here. Check out the scar on his eye. Yeah. <laughs> Did anything stand out to you about these minifigures? Oh, yeah, I specifically requested uh, a battle hardened guy for battle the Panzer IV. Yes. Yeah. So there because they were the most experienced commander. Right. Yeah. So that's that's those guys. Um, yeah, a little 360 here. Got some awards as well, or some other. Um, I think that's like the 50 or uh, 10 engagements, 10 tank kills badge. Oh, cool. I'm not. I'm, I should double check that information, but. Um, yeah, there's just different awards on these. This guy has a, this, yeah, this guy has specifically an award here that he's been in a couple engagements there. He's Moving. seen stuff. He's seen stuff. Moving on, we have the Italian pilot. Tanker. Tanker, sorry, tanker. Pilot Pilot's tanker. coming up. Pilot tanker. Um, one thing I really like is that greenish leather for the bandolier, and that's, a, that's an iconic piece, so it is integrated into the pistol holster, and then you have the ammunition on the front there. On the back, there's some adjustability on that bandolier. Um, but that green color is just, that just is a, is a common. It stands out uh, to me anyways, and you, I see it pop up here and there, specifically in Italian stuff. So that is interesting <laughs> to see. Uh, nice Italian leather boots, right? Oh yeah. Good stuff. And you have this big trench coat with some really intense kind of shadowing going on there trying to give it the, uh, a worn-in, kind of heavy-duty look to it. And then we have the perfect Star Wars element. And then the Star Wars, I mean, it's exactly the exactly. right. Exactly, it's the it's, same. It's very close. If, 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 if LEGO were to be making it, that's exactly what yeah, they, they exactly. would choose. So it's, it's funny to see that um, working so well. Maybe someday we'll come up with our own, own version at some point. Oh yeah, but maybe 3D printed, yeah. Yes, moving on. We have German pilot. German pilot. And this is, if I recall correctly, it's a it's a auto inflating um, life vest, and it's one big membrane. Um, it, I mean, if technologically it was pretty good, but the problem is that if you were to take any shrapnel, you only have one big membrane that's inflated with, yeah. with air. So if there's a hole or a pin at all, you lose all of your uh, flotation ability. So that's kind of why I think at the time they would prefer the like K-pop filled life vest, or I think they might even have like a several cell version later on after that to, to address the problem. So you can see that little oxygen or CO2, I don't know, with some compressed gas tank there on the bottom of that life vest. Underneath of that you have the standard um, Luftwaffe, a kind of field blue uniform underneath of it, and some, some high officer boots, and then that oxygen mask with these sort of circular goggles that I think it gives them a, a menacing look. Oh it. yeah. So that is the German pilot. And then next up we have the Russian pilot. Exactly. Russian pilot. Um, what's interesting about this uniform is from what I can tell there was a lot of lend-lease between the US and Russia at the time. So um, 
this may be, or it may be based off of, a U.S. Navy coveralls from the, from the era, or at least a, a, a derivative of some sort. But, I mean, it's, it's pilot coveralls, so maybe they, at the time, are fairly similar. So that could also be the case. Um, but, yeah, simple pilot. Um, just good, uh, versatile coveralls for this guy. Anything else? No, that's it. Anything? Which one's your favorite? Uh, yeah, okay, you got this that's, guy. That's fair. You got it. <laughs> is it the jacket? Is it the boots? What is I it? I mean, it's leather jacket, super cool. Yeah, Long leather it. jacket. That's exactly it. Um, that's a Matrix vibe. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, this is Barbarossa Bricks. Um, thank you very much for joining us.